Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we'll be showing you how you can self-host CyberChef and use it a little bit. Um, if you haven't heard about CyberChef, it's actually a really fun tool to use. Um, it's kind of like IT tools, if you've seen IT tools or watched my other video about IT tools. Um, but this one's more focuses focuses on encryption, decryption of like text, files, and you can kind of mix and match, kind of like a recipe, and put it all together to kind of start from a starting point and get an output afterwards um, based off of all the things that you want to inject into it. Um, so it's actually really super cool um, and just helps you kind of deal with a few of the things that you're just like, well, I want to, you know, base 64, base 86, something else um, on something or like reverse decode something. Um, it's pretty useful. So let's get started and we'll show you how, how it works a little bit after we set it up. So All right, so what we'll do here um, to get started is, so we're gonna just create a new VM um, with it so that we can essentially show you how, how the install a little bit works. Um, so we'll edit our DNS here real quick so that we can set up a new VM. And we'll call it CyberChef. And 81. So we'll commit this as CyberChef commit that. Um, and then also at the same time, we'll update our Ansible inventory to include a new host um, so that we can run our playbooks against it to set up the server. So let's update the inventory and cyber chef in here and cyber chef. All right. So once that essentially finishes adding, um, we should be able to run the playbook to create and get everything sorted. So we'll let this finish running. So give it a few seconds here and it should be good. There we go. So we can actually run this project. We'll run this. Um, so it'll create a new VM. It'll uh, patch it, install Docker, Docker Compose, and set up TLS. Um, so it's in TLS. So uh, the host name will be called Chef. Um, the new IP will be the 172.16.1.81. We'll just call it Dragon Cyber Chef for our VMware stuff. And then we need the proxy address. So in this case, um, let's take a quick look here. Cyber Chef Docker. Um, obviously, we could we could set it whatever we want. Um, but in this case, this is going to use 8,000. So we're gonna, just going to do 8,000. Localhost 8,000. Um, so we'll launch this, let it run. So um, it'll go through all the steps. This will take a few minutes, um, but essentially it'll create the VM patch, install Docker, create the certificate and set up Nginx. Um, but we will still need to set up the, this Docker Compose file um, and everything else that we will need um, to make this work. So we'll give it a few seconds here um, and we'll fast forward the video so that once this is done, we will get the Docker Compose stuff set up. All right. so. Everything finished, it took about four or five minutes, four or five-ish minutes, um, which isn't too bad. So now we got a server. So what we can do here is log into our Cyber Chef server. And we should have everything that we need. So all we need to do is just add the doc compose file. So we'll copy this, paste it, leave it, and we'll just do a Docker compose up and detach. So once this essentially runs, everything on the back end should be good because we've already had the TLS, we got the certs, everything is fine and dandy. So we should be able to actually now pull up HTTPS cyberchef.dragon.local. And it will pull up CyberChef. So this is essentially CyberChef. Um, I'll give a little bit of a walkthrough because this is actually kind of cool. So there's actually a lot of kind of like hashing, um, forensics and stuff like that. So say for example, you have an input and it says, hello world, right? What you can do is you can say, hey, I want this input to output hello world, but in base 64. So this is the output. So this is the base 64 output of it, but you can actually do it in recipes. So you can actually do like, Hey, I want this to be from base 
to Base64 and then to Hex. So it'll convert the Base64 version of Hello World to Hex. Um, then you can kind of do the opposite where you can do from Hex, which will bring back to Base64, and then from Base64, which should bring back Hello World. Um, so it's really kind of recipe-like where you can essentially disable, enable, um, or certain things and it will essentially go through. So you can see that there are date formats, encryption coding stuff, um, if you want to do that. Uh, public keys, so you can do PGP encrypt keys or decrypt, um, as well as some just functions. So you got the XOR, ORs, ANDs, bit shift, networking. Um, so there's a lot of options you can do here. But if you're looking for something, you know, pretty simple of like, hey, I need to like, you know, do something from base 64 or whatnot, or, you know, do some really fun capture the flag scenario, and you're gonna just throw a lot of these in here, you can definitely do that too. So um, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.